Hey everyone, and welcome to our new video series on getting started with Aspire. Uh, this is going to be the first of, of several different videos um, to help break things down and really go into the nitty gritty details of, of different parts of uh, setting up your first budget. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the configuration page, um, specifically on the configuration page, the categories and groups, and also the accounts sections. Um, so I'll start over in the categories and groups sections. Uh, you can see that I have a few different uh, indicators here at the top, the header items, um, and I'll just go through and, and briefly talk about what these represent. Um, the drop-down selector on the left uh, just tells Aspire what, uh, what type uh, entry you're creating, whether it be a, a category group, um, a reportable or non-reportable category, um, or a, a, a category representing a credit card payment. Um, so there's four different options there, and some more information on that can be found in the documentation. And you can see down the side there, we've got a couple of different uh, examples set by default. Um, the next section, just the category or group name, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, for the next section, monthly amount. Um, this is the, the target um, that you'd like to have in a category every month. This is kind of a, a guideline um, or, or just what you shoot for every month when you put something uh, into a category. So for example, dining out here, um, I try to put $200 in dining out every month. Um, that's just as an example. Um, this isn't necessarily required. Um, this does give you on the dashboard, if you do have a monthly amount, it does give you um, the little pie charts which show you kind of the overall status for the month. Um, it's totally fine not to have a monthly amount. Um, you'll just get uh, a straight green uh, for positive values and, and red for negative values on the dashboard. So that's that's totally fine. Um, I like personally having monthly amounts for almost everything um, just because I like the pie charts um, and it makes budgeting in the category transfers page a lot easier. Um, so the next uh, item there is the goal amount. Um, not every category will have a goal amount. This is really um, there to establish uh, a category that um, you're saving towards. Um, so like, uh, for example, Amazon Prime um, is a good example of that. It's a it's a yearly bill. It's about $120 a year. Um, and I know to reach that, I need to put about $11 a month uh, into that category. So the, the monthly amount that I need to reach my goal amount um, is kind of how I break that down. And um, every category will be a little bit different. Um, some things won't, be, won't break down quite um, over the year. Amazon Prime just happens to be a bill. So that's easy to easy to calculate out. Um, other things might be, uh, like your emergency fund that might, uh, be a little bit different. Um, but we'll go through, go through that as an example here in a bit. Um, and then on, on the far right, we have another drop down. Um, it contains, uh, it can be empty or it can contain a, a check or an X. And really, um, that's just here as a helper, um, to help you calculate uh, a rough six month emergency fund. Um, so the green check mark would mean to include that in your six month emergency fund calculation uh, and the red X would mean not to include that in your red, uh, your emergency fund calculation. So that is uh, categories and groups and how they work. Um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to tweak that just a little bit in a second. But first, I'm going to talk about uh, briefly about accounts. Uh, accounts are um, really meant to represent the, the accounts that you use for budgeting. Um, so that could be your checking account, your savings account, um, and things like credit cards. Um, since all of these accounts are tracked in your budget, um, other things like uh, mortgages or student loans um, or other types of, of accounts like uh, 401ks or retirement accounts, those are really better represented uh, and tracked down in the net worth section um, because those are um, untracked accounts and they, they work a little bit differently than tracked accounts. And that just makes um, life a little bit easier um, and there will be a, another video on uh, net worth and how to set some of that stuff up uh, down the road. Um, but for now, let's just talk about uh, accounts and categories and groups uh, before we proceed. So I'm going to actually add an account here, and I'm just going to call it savings. Uh, and then I'm also going to add in uh, a credit card. Okay, so uh, I've added my two accounts. That's great. I'm done with, with that portion. Um, and I'm actually going to tweak uh, my categories and groups to represent that just a little bit better. Um, just based on the nature of Google Sheets, I don't like to insert rows um, or, or cut and paste or any, anything like that. There's some formatting stuff um, that can really get in the way there, and, and I just prefer not to do it. Um, so I copy and paste, um, and that, I, th I find that that works really well. 
Um, so since I added a second credit card, you can see I'm in the process here of, uh, of adding in my second credit card category. Uh, and I'm just going to give that the same name. Uh, in order for that to work properly, you do need to give that the same name um, as the actual credit card. Um, I intend to pay this card off uh, monthly, uh, in full every month. Uh, so I'm going to leave the monthly amount empty um, because uh, credit cards um, establish their funds automatically, as we'll demo a little bit later in another video. Um, so I'm going to leave that blank for now. Um, the credit card above that, I do uh, have a balance there that I'm actively trying to pay off. So I am contributing um, $50 additional to that in addition to anything that I actually spend on that card over the, over a given month. Um, and again, credit cards are kind of a, a special beast and you'll, you'll see more of that in a later video. Um, so looking through expenses uh, and other various things here, I do want to add in uh, one more monthly bill and I'm going to call that my student loan. I want that to be a non-reportable category because it's the same payment roughly every month and I'm just not worried about tracking that in reports. Um, and I'm going to say that this is uh, $150 a month. Uh, and if something were to happen um, and I had to use tap into my emergency fund, like I lost a job and I needed uh, payments, I would want to track that payment in my emergency fund. I want to make sure that's included in there so I don't miss any student loan payments. Um, okay. Excellent. So that's that category. And I do want to, to add another uh, category down here in long-term funds. And that's going to be to, to house my emergency fund. Um, you can track your emergency fund in a couple of different ways, um, whether it be as a category on this page or uh, as a net worth category. Both are perfectly fine. It just depends on if you add um, those appropriate accounts uh, to your account section or, or if you track them separately. Um, so I'm going to give that a name for emergency fund. Uh, I'm going to try uh, every month to get this up to, uh, I'm going to try to get this up to, what is my tool telling me? Um, about $15,000. So I'm going to just say 15, uh, 15,000 there. Um, I'm also going to select the red X there as an example. Um, I'm not going to contribute to my emergency fund every month if I'm actually using my emergency fund, so I don't need to contribute to it that way. Um, okay, so I've got my categories configured. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I do see up at the top, um, I'm a little bit negative on uh, uh, my to allocate and budget. So I've, I've actually, based on my monthly income, I've, I've put a little bit too much money into my budget um, to the tune of about $330. Um, that's great because the, the 3000 here is the monthly income is a is a default value um, and i'm actually going to say that my monthly income is 3500 um, so that gives me a little bit of extra wiggle room in the budget there just updating that for my monthly income um, okay well that is uh that's it on configuring your uh, categories and groups and accounts um, and then how to use a little bit of this configuration page um, up next we're going to talk about uh, how to initialize those accounts uh, and get those starting balances set up um, so that you can then start budgeting the funds that are in your balances uh, in your accounts so thank you very much and we'll see you then